Irv, I want to I want to talk to you a little bit about Dennis Haster standing up in court today and talking. First of all, did you expect him to address the court? I absolutely expected him to uh, stand up in front of the judge, say what he did was wrong, show remorse for it. Sure. The most important thing in federal court to stand in front of a judge and accept responsibility. Those are the words that federal judges like to hear. Mm. And. I'm sure, as a lawyer said, you have to do that. If you don't do that, you're going to go to the penitentiary. And Dennis Hester read a statement saying, in part, that he was deeply ashamed to be standing before the judge today. He he said, and I quote, "I mistreated some of my athletes," which is an interesting word to choose for that. Um, he said he's deeply ashamed. He claimed that the past 11 months have been very tough on him. And here's part of that set, that statement right now. He says, "Deeply ashamed. I know I'm here because I mistreated some of my athletes. I am sorry to those I hurt. What I did was wrong, and I regret it." Again, he did stand up and, and do this today. A lot of people were very, very um, surprised to see him address the court. That man right there, Scott Cross, that's a yearbook photo from Yorkville High School. Scott Cross was now, we now know, is individual D in all of the Dennis Haster court documents. He stood up in front of court, read a statement, was sobbing about what Dennis Haster did to him. And, you know, Haster then addressed the judge and said, I don't remember if I abused Scott Cross. Um, you were there for, for his testimony. Talk to me again about uh, what you heard and, and the fact that this was the first time that we heard A, from a victim, but also that he spoke about it publicly. Well, I think it's really important that you put a face to the allegations. The face of a victim means everything to a finder of fact, like a jury and a judge at sentencing. And when this gentleman got up there and, and told the judge about his background, how he moved to Yorkville, how he knew the coach, how everybody respected the coach, how he personally respected the coach and was dying to be a member of that wrestling team because of such prominence that it had, you could just see what was going to come next. But this is what Coach Chester did to me. This is the man I put trust in, and he abused that trust, and he abused me. And judge, this is the effect that it's had on me all these years. These are the nightmares that I've had constantly. These are the cause, the reason I've had to uh, seek professional help. So that was a, a, a major piece of evidence in this sentencing hearing. And I think that's why the government may have encouraged uh, Mr. Cross to come and testify. To, to, to let it out, to let everybody know what he went through. And he did say that at the end. He said, Judge, I want you to know what he did to me. And, and he also talked about wanting people to come forward as well, other victims, to not hold it in. Um, you've heard a lot of people testify in court, as well as you know during sentencing hearings. Have you ever heard testimony like this before? I've heard this many times. And you, when you hear the same scenario over and over and over again, and what it's done to these people, that when they try to live a normal life and just can't, the nightmares, the sleeplessness, to to relationships that never worked. Mm -hmm. That's the pattern that you hear. When a child is sexually abused, it doesn't end when they become an adult. It goes on to the day of death. A lot of times in these sentencing hearings, the defendant will have people write letters on their behalf. Mm -hmm. And they say, this is why you should go easy on him in the sentence. Um, Dennis Hester had the same thing as well. And you were mentioning that there was a change in the amount of letters that he sent out and the letters he got back. What does that say to you about the people that he considered part of his inner circle? You know, um, when I read the letters the other night, um, there were 41 letters that, that were finally agreed that could be published in front of the judge. But apparently about 60 of them were written, and the, they were all dated in February and March, mm -hmm. which means the allegations of the specific sexual abuse hadn't come out. It hadn't come out that there were f possibly five kids, and it hadn't come out that he tried to victimize the victim again by falsely accusing him of extortion. Nineteen people, thereabout, said, I don't want my letter submitted. I didn't know about all these allegations. And I'm sure the judge figured out, hey, I may have X amount of letters, but there's a bunch more that people withdrew. That sends a message. Interesting.